Hello, this video is going to be part two on calculating the elasticity of substitution. In the first video I gave you some background information on what is the elasticity of substitution. I showed you how to calculate it and I used a Cobb-Douglas production function as an example. In this video we're going to use a CES production function as an example. CES stands for constant elasticity of substitution. So let's uh, come up with a constant elasticity of substitution production function. So here's an example of a constant elasticity of substitution production function. From this production function, we're going to want to calculate the elasticity of substitution. The first thing we're going to do is calculate a couple marginal products. The marginal product of labor we'll calculate by taking the partial derivative of this production function with respect to labor. And here we're going to get the result that looks something like this. Okay, so this is uh, at the end here, if it's hard to see, this is L raised to the minus two-thirds power. All we did to get this partial derivative was we brought down the three in front, so that's where this three is coming from. From this three in the exponent, we subtracted one, so that's where the two is coming from. And then we multiplied it by the derivative of what's in parentheses, the derivative with respect to labor, so taking the derivative of L to the one-third, we bring down the one-third, so that's where the one-third is over here. And then one-third minus one leaves us with minus two-thirds. We're going to do the same thing, but this time now for capital. So the marginal product of capital. Is going to be the partial derivative of the production function with respect to capital. And basically looks like our previous result, except we got a K down here instead of an L. And just as before, taking this derivative, partial derivative, we bring down the 3 in front. Uh, we subtract 1 from the exponent, so 3 minus 1 leaves us 2. Then we're going to take the derivative of what's in the brackets with respect to capital. So the derivative of K to the 1 third bring down the one-third in front, and then one-third minus one leaves us minus two-thirds. Okay, the next thing we're going to recognize is that optimal input usage requires that the firm obey this condition, that the marginal product per dollar is equal across all inputs. So the marginal product of labor divided by the wage equals the marginal product of capital divided by the price of capital. W is the wage, R is the rental rate or price of capital. We're going to substitute in our marginal products into this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's the marginal product of labor divided by the wage, and then we'll take the marginal product of capital. And we'll divide that by the price of capital. Now some things are going to simplify uh, for us. Um, these, this three and one third are going to cancel, that's just one this three over here and this one-third, that'll just cancel. That'll just become one. So moving up a little bit. And rewriting.
we're left with that. Another nice thing that's going to happen for us is what's in brackets here raised to the second power is going to cancel. If we divide both sides through by this expression here, these two things will drop out. Okay? Got one on each side, so they're going to drop out. Let's go into a clean sheet now. So this is where we were. We had L to the minus two thirds now divided by the wage. K to the minus two thirds power divided by the price of capital. Let's simplify this a little bit. Okay, so all I did here was multiply both sides through by the wage. you're left with this. Okay, now we got something that looks like that. I'm just going to use the rules of exponents, bring k up into the numerator, bring the L term down in the denominator. L to the minus two-thirds is the same thing as one over L raised to the two-thirds power. So we have that. Next, we can just rewrite it like this if we like. I want to get rid of this two thirds uh, power on the left hand side. So I'm going to do that by raising both sides to the three halves power. So if I raise both sides to the 3 halves power, to 2 there, we now have this result. And so let's uh, do something now. Let's let the capital labor ratio equal V, and let's let the wage to rental rate ratio equal z. Okay, and then make this these substitutions into the equation above. If you make those substitutions into the equation above, I'll just kind of sneak it in down here, you're going to get v equals z raised to the three halves power. Okay, that's a two. So let's go on to a clean sheet. Okay, so where we left off, we had V equals Z raised to the 3 halves power. The elasticity of substitution, as I showed in my other video, is given by this expression. We're going to take the derivative of this V equation with respect to Z, multiply it by Z, and divide it by V. So doing that, so that's the derivative of this V equation with respect to Z. Bring down the 3 halves in front, 3 halves minus 1. Then we're going to multiply it by Z, the second part here, and divide it by V. What I'm going to do here, instead of putting in V, what is V? V is Z to the 3 halves power. Let's go ahead and simplify this up a little bit. Okay, so 3 halves minus 1 is just 1 half. Go ahead and add these two exponents up. Z to the 1 half power times Z is just Z to the 3 halves. And we still have Z to the 3 halves power in the numerator. So these two terms cancel, and we're left with 3 halves.
So the elasticity of substitution here is 3 halves or 1.5 in this example. We can interpret this as follows. If the wage to rental ratio increased by, say, 1%, the capital labor ratio would increase by 1.5%. So when labor is becoming relatively more expensive, this firm will use more capital at the expense of labor. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.